The Auburn Tigers continue to turn over their roster via the transfer portal. Just in the last couple of weeks, there's been several guys added by Hugh Freeze and his staff. We are here to break it all down for you on Southeastern 14. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome to Southeastern 14. Of course, you guys know that Peyton Thorne came in to Auburn not long ago, the transfer quarterback from Michigan State. And really, that looms maybe even larger now with a piece potentially out of the backfield. We don't know. We're not going to speak on rumor and innuendo on Jarquez Hunter. One, we don't know all the details of what happened in that video that is circulating with explicit content. We don't know if someone's taking advantage of Jarquez. We don't know if he should have been in that position. Whatever was going on, uh, that will work itself out over time. But if he is suspended for any length of time, then that makes the paint and thorn edition that much bigger in my eyes because if teams are going to be uh, able to stack the box and you don't have a guy like a Jarquez Hunter for any length of time to to help you know help break some of those tackles help help be a guy who okay we can we can get him out of the backfield real quick and maybe outflank somebody to the edge and things like that then that's going to force you to be more accurate and more productive down the field. I think of the two quarterbacks in question, Peyton Thorne is that guy right now for Auburn. We'll see. I know he didn't transfer in to hold a clipboard, so we'll see about that. We talked in a video not long ago. and Make sure you go back and check the archives, guys, because we're constantly putting out videos of SEC football-related. Auburn, Auburn expectations uh, was a few weeks ago, so go check that out. Jaden Muskrat came in from Tulsa. Of course, this is the guy that Philip Montgomery is very familiar with, being the former head coach of Tulsa. He's probably going to slide in in that right guard position and compete over there. But just in the last seven days alone, uh, Auburn has continued to add players. They added two players from North Texas out of Conference USA. Jair Shorter, 6'2", 215, 220-pound receiver, tight end type hybrid. He's a tough guy, can really create after the catch. He's probably one of the most productive players that we're going to talk about that has come in in 13 games last year in the Conference USA, 628 yards. He had uh, 27.3 yards per reception. So this guy is making plays down the field. When he gets the ball in his hands, he is not going down easily and 11 touchdowns on the year so he is a playmaker he has 20 touchdowns in his career at north texas so a nice addition as we all said auburn the one position that was before the jarquez hunter news and and potential problems there the one position that was in question was do they have enough playmakers at receiver well now you add jair shorter that is a nice addition also experience at the linebacker position was a deal as well. They add Larry Nixon the third out of out of North Texas as well. So anytime you can add depth at that linebacker position, that's really good for Auburn because we all know that it's kind of built up the middle in the SEC. You got to have you got to have the big defensive tackles that are going to clog up the middle. You have linebackers that can play sideline to sideline, and of course safeties that are going to communicate well on the back end. And Larry Nixon, the third, is going to help out on that second level of the Auburn defense. Steven Sings is a guy who transfers in from Liberty. So Hugh Freeze goes and gets a guy he's familiar with. Um, not, not overly the most tremendously productive player that they're going to bring in, but he is 6'3", 235, can set the edge with physicality and will have familiarity with Hugh Freeze is the main thing there. Seven sacks on his career, nine and a half tackles for a loss. So, like I said, not the most overly productive player uh, at Liberty, but he is a guy that brings that 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 stature you're looking for. He brings the size. And like I said, Hugh Freeze believes in him, so he's going to bring him in and see what he can do here. And then, of course, they bring in a defensive back from New Mexico in Cyrus Dumas. Okay, Cyrus Dumas – is listed 5'10", 170, 175 pounds, depending on where you look. He's played in 22 games at New Mexico, started 13 games last year, 
47 total tackles last year, five tackles for a loss, had two interceptions to his credit. Listen, Auburn uh, in the secondary, they they did have to to move around a couple pieces. They had to replace a, a couple guys that were leaving. So this is just continued added depth for Auburn. As you look at it, guys, Auburn has very quietly, very quietly, you, you think about Lane Kiffin using the transfer portal a lot. Of course, Deion Sanders, what he's doing at Colorado is just a, a unprecedented use of the transfer portal, both in and out. And then you're talking about different guys around the country, Lincoln Riley, all these people that have used the transfer portal. It could be argued that that Auburn, in a short amount of time, has done a very, very effective job and maybe as effective as anybody of putting themselves in a position where they can have guys that will contribute, especially what they did early on in the in the transfer portal, bringing in guys like Jalen McLeod at linebacker. We talked about needing that that extra depth at the at the linebacker position. They fortified the offensive line, which was big. Uh, brought in guys that that Philip Montgomery was familiar with. You got Dylan Wade, who was an offensive tackle at at Tulsa. So Philip Montgomery familiar with him, just as he is with Jaden Muskrat. You got Gunnar Britton, who's going to start for you at one of the tackle positions from Western Kentucky. He's big old six foot six, you know, two hundred and eighty eighty five pound guy that that played really well at Western Kentucky. And, of course, on defense, we know that they added guys like Justin Rogers and Demario Tolan, who, like I said, the middle of that defense, Justin Rogers, going to be a, a, a shade nose or a, or a heavy three technique. Also, Demario Tolan, a, a very talented linebacker that transferred in from LSU, can run sideline to sideline. So those are the type of key pieces that you're going to need. They also brought in another offensive lineman from ECU, which is a good program. And I know a uh, coach over there that that works very hard with those guys. So he's going to be well coached. His name's Avery Jones. He comes in 6'4", 275, going to play uh, interior offensive line. And, of course, they brought in Brian uh, Batty earlier out, and we saw him in the spring at the running back positions. And now he could have even a bigger role, especially if Jarquez Hunter is suspended for any amount of time. So Auburn continues to add to the roster. Hugh Freeze continues to bring excitement, and that is much needed. Here's why it's much needed, okay? Auburn did not recruit at a high enough level under Brian Harson. Well, some people say, you go look at the rivals recruiting rankings in 2022, 18th overall team. In 2023, 16th overall team. People may say, hey, that's that's a top 25 class. That's not bad at all. That is a huge, huge chasm you're talking about when you're talking about competing with Georgia, Alabama, and LSU who are perennially every single year in the top five. You cannot do that if you're Auburn. You have to recruit better. And if Hugh Freeze knows that he can't right now, if he doesn't have the bullets in the chamber to be able to go out and get some of these four- and five-star guys, then he has to identify, evaluate, and identify guys who have already played college football that can come in and fit into the fabric of that Auburn program while also immediately being able to compete on the field. A guy like a Jair Shorter is going to be able to do that, and he's going to be able to bring – I believe Peyton Thorne will be Auburn's quarterback. He's going to be able to bring Peyton Thorne a weapon down the field, somebody that Auburn desperately needed. Would love to know your guys' thoughts on Hugh Freeze's job so far at Auburn. What do you think about what he is doing when it comes to the transfer portal? Auburn has a chance to get off to a, a hot start early in the season, and then when when they get to the meat of the schedule, when they get to the – the SEC, there's some swing games in there. One of these teams, whether it's whether it's Texas A&M, Auburn, or Arkansas, one of those three teams is going to overperform this year. There's going to be teams that uh, that that sneak up on people. There are year in and year out. Nobody thought LSU would do what they did last year. I believe Auburn has a chance to do that if they can weather the storm early. You got to see how long Jarquez Hunter is going to be out. I think Peyton Thorne adds some some 
versatility to that offense. And people are going to think that sounds weird because Robbie Ashford's the more versatile of the two. But Robbie Ashford's not an accurate passer. He can play 49% of his passes, okay? And you don't just get better at that overnight. I think Peyton Thorne has done it at a high level. Peyton Thorne has, has led a Michigan State team. Yes, I know Kenneth Walker was on that team, but Auburn is going to be able to run the football. They added all those offensive linemen. At some point, they'll get Jarquez Hunter back. Maybe they won't miss, it, miss him any time at all. Who knows? But when it comes down to it, Auburn's going to be able to run the football. They need someone who can distribute the football effectively and be accurate with the football. So tell us your thoughts on all this, guys. We would love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. For Southeastern 14, I'm Blaine Gilmer, and we'll catch you guys next time.